and he was a very bright young scholar at that time. Uh, he, he always was very truthful. And so he had this tremendous integrity, and this integrity, of course, uh, dominated his work, both in the law uh, faculty and law administration, and then later on the management of the University of Malaya. very humble person, very unassuming, and I think what was absolutely wonderful about it was that he was so brilliant, so capable, such an important person in society, and yet he was so unassuming and so humble. And that is my, you know, uh, strongest memory of him, uh, which is always a reminder to us that one should always be like that. You know, like a mango tree that's full of fruit bending down, right? quite unlike the lalang, which is empty but standing out straight. So that was my image of Prof. as a I, I think he was a genuine scholar. Now, genuine scholars are very rare, especially today. As a scholar, b even before, I, I knew people who knew him when he was at Cambridge, you see, and after that. So they told me about him. And so I knew uh, about him before I actually met him. So because his memory is fantastic. On the other hand, was not a fighter. He didn't come out and say, you know, I go for you uh, and we have a ding-dong fight. He had a vision how the faculty of law should be. Mm -hmm. And I think he managed to gather around him a group of students and also professors and associate professors who had the same ideal as he had. So I think he, he, he did a very great job. jokes he made about uh, life of an academic was he was going uh, to USM to give a lecture all right and Sudirman Arshad who was the singer was on the same plane with him going to uh, Penang to do a show and then prof came back and said you know uh, I was paid hundred ringgit for a one-hour lecture and Sudirman was paid 25,000 
for singing for one hour. He said, I think I'm in the wrong profession. <laughs> He's always won the, won the Songko. I cannot imagine Prof without the Songko. 